we are talking here about your um, latest documentary, um, uh, The Fog of Srebrenica, uh, which uh, tw uh, takes on the genocide of Srebrenica and the terrible atrocities that happened in Srebrenica. Um, Samir, uh, tell me what what made you uh, to create this this very moving and heartfelt picture? Well, it, I mean, you know, the 20 years of anniversary commemoration was coming, you know, and I didn't see many good films made. And I also have seen lots of denial and it's like some, someone or somewhere people want to forget about this, you know, which is partly responsible Bosnian government as well, you know, as well as regional governments, but as well as, you know, I believe United Nations and international media. What did we learn out of this? Is there, is there some kind of conclusion on, on, on genocide in Srebrenica? And then once I start to research, then I realize there isn't. You know, I realize there's no justice. There, you know, I realize that Hague have gathered the evidence, but they persecuted only 20 people. In your film, um, will you show um, insight stories of the local people who survived the survivors of Srebrenica? And uh, you're giving a very, very um, well. You're giving a bit of a reality TV from 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 Srebrenica and the area. Uh, now. Um, you, you, don't, you don't talk in your documentary about the responsible uh, um, uh, people for this, for the atrocities here. I mean, let, let me maybe mention Milosevic or all the characters that were involved in that. Um, is, is, it, is it very difficult to talk about these things or is it not very clear to, to state who, who is entirely responsible for what happened in Bosnia? I think, I think there's two, two reasons for this. First of all, I wanted to tell personal stories. And I think that, uh, you know, for people who have been killed within five to six days, they, their life was over. And it was over in two days of fear, maybe torture and then murder. But for people who survived, it lasts, you know. The, there's huge effect of losing 67 members of family, for example, like old men in the film, or 200 like old lady Hatija. So, so this is what I wanted to focus, and what's universal message for the future, and how can we in Balkans deal, live together, and etc. So for who is responsible for that, I will, you know, I will leave to, to The Hague, you know. We, know. we know who is responsible, and I didn't want to politicize the yeah. film. The problem is that Hague, for me, is a big failure. Because you, you're not paid to do PhD, you're paid to punish people. You know, if you actually brought 21 people for Srebrenica in 21 years for justice, that, that means you're not doing a good job. If Karadzic has got 40 years, and two, three days after, I read that some, some guy in America killed two people and he got 40 years. I mean, what message are you sending to Assad? What message you're sending to Russian airplanes who are now hammering Aleppo? You know, you know, these people are, yesterday they threw barrel bombs to the hospital. And this is something that I, I personally am an artist, I'm not, I'm not politician, and I didn't want to bring politics into film, which is meant, meant to be maybe film for healing, film for opening dialogue. And I would be glad to show in Belgrade next month, and I'm looking as a challenge, and I'll probably have to pay good insurance. But there are people in Belgrade who want to open the page because if we don't talk, if we don't discuss, we, if we don't accept the guilt and if we don't apologize, we might have this repetition again. And, and this is why Europe is so unstable in a way. You know, when you were um, finalizing the film and when you finally got to a stage of premiering the film, um, what were you expecting the outcome in Britain would be from the British audiences? Once we finish, BBC World have bought and showed version, TV version, and BBC Newsnight, you know. And actually, you have, I have, you know, there is much more interest from intellectuals, from people who do care about this world, and who are realizing that this is, this is not, you know, this is not our, our past history. And there's many people like the other night, Vero says, I'm, I'm born in 93, and it's a shame that I didn't study, there's no in schools, this education. You know, and on the other hand, you know, the other night in Edinburgh Film House, they change uh, documentary from cinema two, from 90 seats into big cinema, cinema one, and they push some other big budget film into cinema two, which is great victory in a way for documentary. So that means with these modern formats, you can do that. But it's important to stick to important subjects that will bring some light. On 
Um, Samir, um, in your film you're also um, kind of indicating that uh, there was a significant failure uh, on the side of the U United Nations um, intervention there, especially the, the Dutch troops and uh, the, the NATO, well, the NATO involvement in there. Uh, um, well, we've got the conflict in Syria at the moment where the NATO is involved, of course, and we've got the United Nations there. Do you think the structures of both the NATO and the United Nations are in jeopardy? And the first problem starts from uh, uh, United Nations, you know, where actually United Nations could never actually agree on anything positive that will happen in Bosnia because you have Security Council. And one country will always veto Security Council on this way or that way, but at the moment it's Russia and the same happening in Syria. If any positive, constructive you know, think, and I'm talking about Russian politics, not Russian people, of course. So if anything constructive has to happen, there's always somebody who will veto in Security Council. And we cannot have that. The United Nations has failed miserably to protect and prevent and protect civilians and children and women and to punish the perpetrators. Because if you have a world like this, you know, then you will have another Rwanda, another Bosnia, another Syria. And then you're scared of refugees coming to Europe. You know, you, you know, United Nations should be there to prevent the crisis, not to deal with them. This is ridiculous. If you send soldiers, and as Hatija says, you know, it could be any other battalion. If you, had, if you send 400 soldiers and don't allow them to use force, you know, then, you know, you're leaving them exposed. And, and this is not, in a war, you cannot be peacekeeper. You know, you can be peacekeeper before and after war, but in a war you cannot. And maybe we need some, you know, international army that will have rapid response. But then, obviously, there's huge manipulation who will sell more weapons. And that's, more, and that's priority rather than protect life of civilians. And did you show the film uh, to your um, uh, people in Srebrenica, to your friends, families, etc.? And what was the what was the response? What was the reaction? I think this film allows them, without cutting, without putting brain of director, to tell their stories. And another emotional screening was really in Italy. That's very close to Yugoslavia, you know, in, in a great, great little, fe I mean, great big fest when a small town of Pordenone, birth of Pier Paolo Pasolini, so so birthplace. So and and also in Edinburgh, you know, home city where I live, and and you know. And I'm expecting similar kind of response in, in Belgrade, actually, you know, and I'm looking forward to it. So what are your future plans and next projects? Uh, well, at the moment, I'm trying to finish the film about Syrian refugees, obviously, because I was a refugee myself. I came to Edinburgh in 95, just, one, just two months before war was over in Bosnia. And I believe that humanity today needs to raise another questions and make more independent films, because uh, very often, you know, forced by you know, big corporations that are running media and states at the moment. You know, you have to cut many stuff out. And I think independent filmmaking, is, 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 there is place and, and formats are, are cheap. So just uh, get, get your iPhone, get your camera and go and tell important stories the way you see it. Sami Mihanovic, thank you very much for the interview. And I wish you all the best of luck with your further uh, filming and documentaries and sending the message across. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Rád je stál, ale zanežete, že už je k němu, 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 že už